While researching the dial in Petscop 17, which I'm making a video for, I set out to try and understand and explain the reason for these pyramid head guys and what they are. The easiest explanation is that they are an assortment of recordings, replaying themselves throughout the house, and when one is picked, it's given the guardian head and the camera is fixed to track it. But why is this the case? Why not just give them all guardian heads to begin with? What's with all these red triangles? First, let's begin by designating what roles these heads might play. If we assume that these heads in Petscop 17 are the heads given to recordings that are replaying themselves, then we can assume that the pyramid head equals a recording replay. This is in part confirmed in Petscop 12, where Bell sees who we assume to be Paul from Petscop 10 with a pyramid head. But because the guardian head is given to Bell, as it is her demo that we're watching, Paul's recording is just there as a pyramid head and not the focus of attention. But we saw demos replaying themselves previously with the guardian head. Why were they given the guardian head? What significance is the guardian head in terms of Petscop? If we assume that during the demo replay, a single recording is designated a guardian head, and then that recording's inputs are followed until completion, then all other recordings that were present during that recording's playthrough are given the pyramid head to denote that they are not the selected recording being followed. So the guardian head, from what we can tell, denotes the recording that is currently being followed by the camera. Pseudologic-wise, it probably works by making the recording a player of sorts, with its own internal values, like a bit counter, being stored in a temp save file. The temporary player is then guided by previous inputs of the previous players. This would make sense, as we know the game repeats inputs verbatim, regardless of the change in environment. We see Paul utilising this knowledge in Petscop 14 to get into the garage. I know some of you might be wondering, Belle ran into Paul outside of her room and he just disappeared. How does that work if he was just a recording? If my take on these pyramid heads being recordings that aren't selected to be followed by the camera is correct, then there are two possibilities. One, this isn't the same recording outside the room as the one of Paul inside the room, or two, this is the same recording, but once Paul came into contact with Bell, his game crashed and his recording stopped. So the guardian head denotes current player, the one the camera will track, and stores internal values for it. Pyramid head denotes a recording that is in the area, but not selected to be the player. And let me clarify for anyone confused. Yes, the player has the guardian head on their character when playing the game. When I talk about the recording being made the player, what I am talking about is that the recording, rather than being a video replay, is in fact a replay of inputs. And when it is chosen to be a demo replay, it is given the guardian head so it may be tracked by the camera while replaying those inputs, and has all the properties of a normal player character assigned to it. But what about the Marvin and Bell head? Well, here's where things get tricky. If heads denote states of being in Petscop, what does this weird mask mean? It represents Marvin, right? Certainly sounds like it. So we might know who Marvin is now. This is Marvin, right? So Marvin is the green mask guy, right? Well, maybe not. We all know that Marvin moves faster than Paul by about 15 to 20 percent, as proven in Petscop 20. So we can tell who he is by seeing how fast he runs and comparing it with Paul's speed. It is Marvin in Petscop 6, 7 and 8. As you can see, he runs faster than Paul. And hey, we hear people call this guy Marvin all the time, and he's been shown to kidnap Care. People even reference him kidnapping Care. Do they? What do they actually say? When watching this next bit, keep this statement in mind. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? According to the note writer, Marvin will probably choose Care next, but it doesn't state what she'll be chosen for. It doesn't say anything about a kidnapping, just that a young person walks into a school with someone we assume to be Marvin and walks out crying. And while the yellow text seemingly represents care, 
According to Paul, the yellow text in Petscott 14 was something he said, not care. I think that was based off of a conversation that I had last year on my birthday. Paul only assumes this to be Marvin from his mask, and while his speed confirms that it is Marvin, it doesn't mean that the green mask denotes Marvin. This is Marvin, right? Pink Tool references Marvin, but not what he looks like or who he is. So we might know who Marvin is now. The note in Petscop 11 says her husband, Care's father, and therefore Marvin, may come over after 6pm. Someone does and kidnaps Care, but is it Marvin? Who's this other guy that was meant to stay over? When Paul tries to talk to Marvin in Petscop 15, his speech comes out as not in table, although we know he was trying to say Marvin. But, like Petscop 8, he's only assuming it is Marvin there, with the series cleverly sidestepping the need to confirm his identity. In Petscop 17, during Care's backstory, it says she was kidnapped, but it doesn't say by who. It had previously stated that her father's name is Marvin, but leaves out whether or not he was involved. In Petscop 20, Rayner states that he's writing the message on July 10th, 1997, and Care is still missing to Marvin. Why would Rayner be writing to the kidnapper, asking for his help to find Care, if indeed he was the one to kidnap her? And during his inspection of the caskets, it isn't mentioned that Marvin resides at the school, just a dirty building that he inhabits. And it doesn't mention the kidnapping of Care at all, just that she escapes. Escaping from her captors is a likely scenario, but it doesn't mean that Marvin was the one that kidnapped her. And who is this guy watching her as he painted? We only assume that the guy in the green mask is Marvin, but none of this states that Marvin directly kidnapped Care. It's all just implication, or that in the video game Marvin is identified by the mask. We and Paul just assume. Marvin may wear the green mask, but that doesn't mean that Marvin is the only one who might wear it. It may be, like the Guardian head, a designation of some sort. But the most definitive proof that it might not be Marvin in the green mask all the time is in Petscop 11. Watch. If Marvin is faster than Paul as a rule, then this isn't Marvin. This is someone else. He runs at the same speed as every other character. These are the only instances I can find that has the green mask running at this speed. The start of Petscop 14 also has who we assume to be Marvin running at normal speed. It seems like Marvin is running at the same speed as Paul here in the house as well. But to keep on track and on topic, we can verify that the green mask does denote something, possibly. Maybe developer powers. But it doesn't mean that whoever has it is Marvin. It might be the same for text. Just because a text is green doesn't mean it was Marvin who said it. It may denote, like the heads, a person's role or a state in the Petscop world, rather than who they are. Much like how in Petscop 14, it was Paul's words, but cares text. Finally, we come to Belle and her head. Not much can be said for it other than that it's clearly incomplete, and looks aesthetically like the early designs of the Guardian head we see in Petscop 18. It was left unfinished either because it was abandoned during development of the Petscop game, and this was all that was designed, or, through some MacGuffin that we don't understand yet, Belle was put through the rebirthing process we hear about, but as we know she gave up halfway, and this was the result. An incomplete version of Tiara named Belle. So why do we see Bell's and Marvin's head in-game and not the Pyramid Head recordings? The only conclusion I can come to is that Marvin and Bell, as shown in the demo footage story that happens in Petscop 11 and 15, along with Paul, are somehow not recordings but are either A, other players playing the game and therefore not recordings, or B, they themselves are either intelligent AI, special characters or something, unrestricted from any need for any pre-recorded inputs and have created for themselves, or by the developers, their own special designations. They are still able to be made guardian heads though, as we see Belle and Marvin with these heads when watching their recordings replay themselves. Sadly, at the moment, I can't figure out what they are. There is still a lot unexplained, especially this.
Okay. Both the heads explain to the best of my ability, I can now explain the dial. 